Yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be with you again today. As we the 47th anniversary of our independence. We ask that you take a ride with us, sit back, as we give you a little history uh, of Grenada, our beautiful island, actually the trial and state of Grenada, Carico and Pity Martin. And we are playing a song from the group called Calabax, with uh, musicians from Grenada, St. Vincent, and uh, Carico. It is by Cassime Pitt. May God bless you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Grenadians throughout the world and back home in Grenada, may God bless you on our 47th anniversary of independence. Today we have a short show for you. We will go back in time and give a brief history of Grenada and the person who led us to independence. The topic today would be, let us reason together, giving Uncle Gary his due. Of course, he's the father of our nation. So that song playing express our pride as Grenadians in what we have accomplished we are hospitable people. We are very proud of what we have. We have inherited a beautiful land, beautiful beaches, so many gems that we could develop. We are a loving people. And we invite you to come and enjoy our hospitality and help us build. Together, we can aspire, we can accomplish. So I will continue with a little tribute to Sir Eric Matthew Geary. All right? Good. Sir Eric Matthew Geary came from humble beginnings in the parish of St. Andrews. His family uh, tree is rooted in the area of uh, pearls, La Fillette and Paradise, St. Andrews. He was a man of the people and for the people. A man whose goals and dreams were to empower the working poor, lifting them from poverty, illiteracy, and misery. A man whose only desire was to change the lives of the many, bringing into their lives something called decency and upward mobility. So from waking up early before dawn, grabbing a tall boot, a cutlass, a fork sometimes, or a cocoa knife, after eating fig, and conjacts, off the laborers went to labor, even in the pouring rain. They slaved all day long for a few pence a day. They walked the plantation, exploited the war by the landowning class. They had no choice but to labor to feed their families. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the estate workers or laborers, they worked without representation, without pension, without health care, and sometimes they had to tow the children behind them all day long. Education for them was a luxury many couldn't afford. So yes, life was brutal and hard with no possibility of upward mobility. That was before the coming of Sir Eric Matthew Geary. In the interest of time, since we started a little late, I want to bring to your memory some of the accomplishments of Sir Eric Matthew Geary. I am talking about Expo 69. I am talking about over 30 schools and clinics built in the Tri-Island State. I am talking about the School of Medicine or the St. George University, which accounts for some way around 35% of Grenada's GDP. I am talking about housing schemes for the poor to have a roof over their head at night. Of course, we also had the Easter water parades that brought many tourists and uh, yachtsmen and boatmen to participate in water sports and activities, bringing a cash infusion to the island. The South St. George hotels and guest houses, even the taxi drivers made a killing. That was Gary's vision. I could also add the international airport, which he didn't have the funds for, but he had the drawing plans. He had no money. That was Gary's brainchild. We cannot forget poor relief, also known as travel, where our elderly folks were taken care of by doing some road work, cleaning drains, cutting bushes, which we call debushing, and so forth. And he would take care of them with a little stipend. It was poor relief. Around Christmas time, Uncle Gary mixed and mingled with the poor. They all went to Mount Royal. They get little baskets of food and toys for the children to take back up to the countryside. That was Uncle Gary's contribution to Grenada and more because I have not touched on the color barrier. At that time, Grenada was dominated by the plantocracy. And as you know, the people who gained political power in Grenada, they inherited their legacy from being one indentured servants or the monies and properties their parents pass on to them. Also, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of colonialism, half mulatto, half quarter mulatto, etc. The upper class in society who benefited directly from the plantocracy, they were the ones ruling Grenada. So a little nappy here, flat nose, black boy from Pearl's paradise, he had no respect. He was out of place. He didn't go to university. He had no place trying to be prime minister or chief minister or head of the legislative council in this country. The bourgeoisie, they made him pay for it. They never forgave him 
for what he did in 1951 for the working poor. I shall move on. With the advent of the strikes around 1950, 1951, upon his return from Aruba, Uncle Gary formed a political, actually it was a trade union movement called the Grenada United Labor Party. He was all about the working poor, the exploited poor. They had no way up and also no way out. Some estates had to be burnt to the ground. The plantocracy, the bowed. Concession after concession was won by Geary or else it would be sky red. Sugarcane workers got huge increases. Cocoa and banana estate workers also benefited too. Finally, the aristocracy had to kneel in front of Uncle Gary and agree to collective bargaining. Come 1951, Sir Eric Gary become became head of the Legislative Council, and that paved the way for his rise uh, in politics, taking us to independence on February 7, 1974. However, however, we cannot forget the price paid for that victory. He was never forgiven. His programs were sabotaged by the same enemy of the people, the planters aristocracy, the children who went abroad and became lawyers and doctors. They carried the hatred forward. They never forgave Uncle Gary. As I said before, flat nose, nappy hair, and dark complexion. He's a country boy, a little black boy, he was referred to. So it doesn't matter what gains So Eric Matthew Gary made for the nation of Grenada, Grenada Caricon Pity Martinic. Every good he did was a bad. Anything progressive he did was not good. Even the independence of Grenada, the opposition rallied against it and they fought him tooth and nail. I could refer to the strikes in 1973 and onwards. They even burnt buildings in St. George. Anything they could throw at Gary to make sure his program fails and he doesn't succeed. But the people knew. They knew the Grenada they had before Uncle Gary returned from Aruba. Because they had to wake up early in the morning before sunrise, sometimes going to work with a flambeau, which is a bottle full of kerosene with a piece of cloth, which you call a wick, so they could see to head to the estate and slave for a few pence. They walked there until night and they came back. They didn't have lamp, they didn't have electricity. Electricity was introduced to Grenada in 19, around 1928, but that was in St. George. Most of the people up north had to use kerosene and make a flambeau also called a Masanto. It was somewhere in the 40s after the construction of Paul's airport, most people up north got electricity. Of course, the majority of the working poor didn't even have running water. They had to use a pipe stand. 
the plantation owners suck the lifeblood out of the laborers dry and they had no regrets for doing so. The attention was turned to defeating Sir Eric Matthew Gary. And of course, the irony of it is on March 13th, 1979, the children and grandchildren of the very people Sir Eric Matthew Gary liberated from the plantocracy, they took up arms and overthrew him. As we say, no good deed goes unpunished. I would wrap up in a few because we started a little bit late, but I just wanted to get out there in the stratosphere the things Gary did for Grenada. Nobody could even come close, whether you like him or not. My parents didn't like him. I never supported Gary. But it is said in the Bible, the stone that the builder refuses sometimes become the head corner stone. When you go back in time and you look at his contribution to Grenada, speak truth to power, give the man his due. So at this time, we would have a little talk, maybe play a little music, I could answer some questions and uh, we could have maybe one or two more bits of information on the origins of Grenada and, uh, you know, our four parents are not only talking about Africans who came, but the people before the Africans uh, came to Grenada, before Columbus and all of that, who um, uh, occupied Grenada, the natives. We would get into the history and the chronology of them living in South America, even before it was called South America, the region of Brazil, Guyana, Dutch Guyana, Suriname, and so forth. Uh, and they migrated up north in dugout canoes and rafts made from bamboo and wood. In waves, we will get into that in a few. Okay? So let us have a little talk, a little discussion, and uh, we can come back. Uh, Ingram, let us uh, have a little chat. Thank you, Philip. Dennis, that was absolutely amazing. Yes, sir. Melvon. Amazing. Melvon, your thoughts? Yeah, good, good. Now, great, great, great. Um, I listened to last, last year. I'll tell you, you look flamboyant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is good, good, good. I grew up, yeah, growing up in Grand Dance. Mm -hmm. Which part I grew up when Gary just come back from um, Aruba. Mm -hmm. He used to live in the Defreitas house, opposite uh, across the road. Uh, so I know as a little boy, I know him very well, and I used to be a lot by his doom down by hibiscus in okay. um, as kids, as kids, um, my grandfather, and you understand? Yeah. And a lot of things what Dennis is saying, I, as I tell somebody today, under Gary, a lot of people get property where they could they give to the children and even great grandchildren a yeah. piece build a house because nowadays learning grade are selling for us yes so we cannot afford to buy a piece of land the system how it's set up is to push us out of the the, the, the salt of the island and the coastal area and push us into the hills um gary give that opportunity to us ingram a lot of people see at home now the building apartment blocks now, and these apartment blocks is just four walls, not a place to plant a piece, a corner, anything. In, in five to ten years' time, you go see it. It's a second life until developing in the Caribbean and this part of the world, this type of thing. But the end of the 
what Dennis touched on there is really passionate because I know about it. I grew I grew up around that time in Grenada. I've been backward and forward. Yeah. Things we see a lot of stuff, but you need to look at what a man did. And even in Night of Independence, the same flambeau Dennis talked about. The Queen of England together, that is what they use in order to put foist the flag and take out that thing because the Jack, the Jack, what was the name of the flag then? The Union Jack or something like that. Union Jack to take it down because it was Bacchanal at the time. They shut the place down. Right, and then the 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 Manawa, the Manawa boat was mm -hmm. outside in the harbor, and it had looting and all this other sort of stuff happening around that time. But um, I could remember that um, so today, which is Independent Day, still have a canal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So nice, that yeah, Dennis. Thanks. I I tried. Yeah, Dennis. We just got a message here from Sylvia. She says this Happy Independence to all Grenadians everywhere Uncle Gary and my daddy went to the same school And played marbles together in the road by by home He used to be living in Dunfermline uh, ND daddy lived in Santa Fe Paradise so he, so he had to take the shirt cut by home, cut by home to go at his home yeah, that, that is correct. So that, that area there, Pearls, Dunfermline, even Lafayette and Paradise is, you know, within half a mile of each other. It is right, yeah. right there, you know, Sam Zin area there. All right. So there is a shortcut you could take to go up Paradise, Lafayette area there. And if you go on the main road, you could go back down to Pearls. It's, it's, it's the general area right there where his family was spread. But as I said, what, what really uh, conditioned uh, young people's mind, uh, or minds against Gary, was the fact that Jerry Romaine, whom I got to know, uh, he was on the radio station, he was British trained, uh, I think he was a reporter for the BBC and all of that. He was not good at counteracting the narrative against Gary. In other words, the pro propaganda made against Gary stuck. And he did not undo it, not realizing that if a lie, lie travels faster than light. If you say it many times over and over. A big <laughs> lie travels faster than light. And it sticks. Yeah. It takes you decades before people eye. Look at, we just had an election here. Look at what happened in Maryland with a few lies. In, in the capital, the nation capitals, you know, capital, DC, right? A few lies. Look at what happened. About five people died. Hmm. Just a few lies. So if you don't counteract the disinformation, the misinformation, and the propaganda, they would speak on you, which is what the 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 Joel movement did pretty effectively against Gary. You know, so they tag him with the Mongols gang, they tag him with this, they tag him with that. But they are not saying the assassination attempts they made on the life of Gary. And I could talk to that. Serious accusations, pumping him down and trying to assassinate him because he liked to party and all of that. They wouldn't talk about that. The number of people they attempted to kill him so he had to surround himself with folks who could protect him and who could fight back. Gary was pushed because he had to survive, right? To surround himself for his own safety. He had children too. I know he has two girls and a boy, right? In fact, I think both of them in Georgia or at least one of them in Georgia, you know? So, but they don't talk about that. When they finally couldn't get Gary, they got Innocent Belma, which was Gary's right-hand man. Yeah. The to defeat Gary is to remove Belma from this team. You understand? So they succeed in, in the assassination of, uh, of, uh, of Innocent, uh, Innocent Belma. Gary was exposed. And hence, 
the revolution 1979 came after that Gary had nobody that anybody was uh, the guys were afraid of and I could I could make mention freely if I want to of Ralph Thompson Ralphie from River Road I, I could also mention Strong Philip from information that I know personally and I have. In fact, I know Ralphie very good. I was one, well, I wouldn't get into that topic, but I saw Ralphie just before he died. After he did all that he did, he was supposed to have executed Gary and, and uh, he, he got cold feet, he didn't, he lost favor uh, eventually with the jury movement or the no jury movement and then he was incarcerated and, and he was he died in prison under bishop during the revolution but today I'm not talking about revolution what I'm saying is you compare apples to apples if you're going to condemn Gary on one corner of your mouth stand for truth use the same yardstick and condemn those who came after Gary with the same yardstick. You don't have two tongues in your mouth and you talk from one corner here and then you talk from a different corner, you know, when it is suitable for you. The truth is not convenient. You go down the middle and speak truth to power. And I dare anyone to challenge me who want to come out. I didn't support Gary. My dad was mad. He took this land in my dad owned to build a pasture for people to play cricket. And my dad flipped. So we grew up as GNP. Well, later on, the jury movement, everybody loved uh, Maurice Bishop. But compare what Gary did for the working poor when they had to bow their head and call a light skinned person, uh, uh, they're working on the estate or whatever, mom, yes, mom, and put their head down and do all of that stuff. When Gary came, came to Grenada, Somebody like me, with a flat nose and nappy hair, I couldn't get a job in a bank. I couldn't be a principal of a school. I couldn't be in front of any big ministry with my skin color. Gary broke the color barrier. And not only that, if you didn't go to Presentation Brothers College or GBSS, Grenada's Boy, Grenada Boys Secondary School, Crapple smoke your pack. There was no upward mobility or the possibility of mobility for most Grenadians from the country. So, yes, Gary was a country boy and he made sure that he empowered folks from the country. Uh, before I, I let uh, 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 Kutin come in, I, I just want to remind our listeners that at that time when Gary returned from Aruba, the working poor in the country there were just one cut about slavery most of the homes in grenada didn't even have galvanized when gary returned they had touched roof i'm gonna tell you what it is so in my my village conference tivoli la poetry most of the people they would use coconut leaves they split it in two and they would intertwine it with sugarcane leaves. So when the rain fall, you know, the water would run down that way. They put it at an angle, so it pitch, and the water would slope out. In, in terms of um, the kitchen, they would mix mud with cow dung. If, if you look at certain um, countries in Africa, um, you would see uh, like the Maasai, the Maasai, the Maasai, right? Maasai. Right, where they use this mud thing, mud brick thing, and they, right? The Yes. Whatever the name is, same thing. Okay? So they would mix the cow down with the mud because they cannot buy cement. And they would plaster. And 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 the bad thing about it is if we want to talk about <laughs> land projects, right? When an estate worker speak, spoke, or let's say speak up for his rights. <laughs> And the estate worker, let's say, the owner of that estate would just kick them out, out, out of the property. They had to move. So it's like every week or so, you know, all the time, 
they had to break the houses, put it on the big trucks. At the time, we had big trucks, wooden trucks, right? All the galvanizers and wood and all of that, and try to get a spot from another person who would exploit them just for the spot. They had to work, pick cocoa and all of that. They, they maintain them. I mean, the exploitation was hard. And if they open them up, you know, they vote Gary because they're liberals, then that estate uh, landowner or whatever it is again, whenever they feel like, they tell them, you got to leave my land, you got to go. So now they had to put the house on a truck again and move to another somebody place to build. Gary had to solve that problem. So hence the reason for the land, you know, the land reform project, land for the landless. So it's not all how they make it seems that Gary just wanted to destroy banana and cocoa. That's a cop out. They don't tell you what the estate or the land owning class did to the laborers. Also, Gary built housing schemes where you got your own house. Forget your credit or no credit. People know about credit score. I could talk about telescope. I could talk about River Road, where the poor people were able to get a place called home, a roof over. It is a small but brick house, right? And I could take you and show you where, where it is. I stayed at one of them, you know. I, I was working at the Grenadian Voice with Leslie Pierre, and when I didn't want to go up in the country, I was at one of the houses belonging to the Mongols gang, a Mongols gang member, for free. And I'd go work in the Grenadian Voice with Mr. Redhead and uh, Mr. Leslie Pierre. So, as I said before, when I talk, it's not garbage. It is not garbage. Give the man his due. Forget about skin color and his hair was nappy and he has a flat nose. Give the man his due. Because those who came after haven't done 10% of what he did. Give the man his due. The poor people working on the estate at that time used to have to cut flower bag and make underwear with it. They couldn't buy nylon panties. It is when Uncle Gary put the plantocracy on the knees and extracted concessions for them, the poor people were able to buy fancy clothing, underclothing. So don't let those who, who, who like to open their mouth and talk hot air, you know, I mean, they have their right. But let us put facts together. Tell me anybody who come close to accomplishing some of the things Uncle Gary did with schools, how many schools he built, clinics in different villages and all of that. Poor relief, you know, for folks when they can't really walk the estate anymore and cut sugar cane, it's back breaking. You understand me? They get a little something. Christmas time, he take the poor, bring them to Mount Royal and feast them. And they get little presents to take motorbahn and whatever, take to the children back in the country. Tell me any prime minister in the history of Grenada had that kind of love for the people. And mind you, I did not like Gary. My parents didn't support Gary. But I stand with my conviction. And as you know, folks, I'm not going to back down from anyone who could come and, and, and tell me XYZ did more for Grenada than, than Gary. The Easter Water Parade was a huge success. The carnage used to be lit like a Christmas tree with all sorts of yacht men from around the world. Grenada used to host some big conventions on Grand Anse. True Blue was opened up by Gary. Now we have Prickly Bay, we have this, we have all of that big highway, Morris Bishop Highway. That is a, that's a big wrong that needs to be righted. If you give the airport to Morris Bishop, it wasn't his idea anyway. He got it done. Say thanks to the Cubans. Right. Fine with me. Give the highway to Uncle Gary. It was his dream. He's the one that opened up True Blue. 
Expo 69. Grenadians don't know the history. They are stuck believing that Grenada was discovered in 1979 after the revolution. So they have their own, I don't know, alternate reality. And they are stuck in that mode. But if you ask them two questions and you go deep, they can talk. Let us speak truth to power. Give Uncle Gary his due. He is the father of our nation. He did more for Grenada than anybody else to the point where at one point when he had the, the British and, and, and the legacy, those who represented them on the plantation, because when they went back, you know, uh, uh, to France, let's say England and, and whatever, they left overseers on the estate. They also put in some of the indentured workers and the children. So if you left Asia or India, wherever it is, you want a slave, you want not slaves. You are brought to work, you get paid. So if you look at the Ramdanese, where do you think they get the legacy from? The Bublal, the Nayak, I could go on and on. It's one set of people. They all oppose Gary, why? The founders of the Jewel movement, look at them. Do they look like me? Teddy Victor, Unison White Man. Then we have Maurice Bishop. Do they look like us? Where did they eat? Maurice Bishop is a Lagrenade. Do you know who was Captain Louis Lagrenade? I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm not going to get into it. That's for another topic. But facts should be facts. Keeping people in the dark and lying, the days for that is gone. And even though I didn't support, and my parents didn't support Uncle Gary, I'm grown enough to say, Lord, we treat this man badly. It is time that we, we correct that. Thank you. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. Well, um, good afternoon, Grenada. Good afternoon. Happy Independence. I presently am in River Sally right now, and I did by the road because they were getting proper signals. So you hear a little noise, so excuse me. But River Sally have a, a, a good vibe, man. Nice spirit. The people up here, the cultural, the friendly. Um, I try to find my roots, so every other weekend I go out in a different community in Grenada and I meet family members and they take me around. And uh, my family on my mother's side is, is strongly rooted in St. Patrick area. And my grandfather, I learned from my aunt yesterday, my grandfather was in charge of the prison at one time, and I think they hanged somebody and he, he decided they wanted him to do something to the body, he was against it, he left the job um so a lot of things i learning but dennis i'm a supporter 100 percent my family wasn't wasn't just like me there wasn't too much into the politics my family was a family that traveled a lot um and the the, the when the thing started it, most of my family migrated who went to england who went to the states who went to trinidad and that was um thing but as my grandmother told me this place in granan's call was the college race course was before it was just a race course day and that is where gary put the the road the highway race course it's called the race road risk um race course and that from there expo 69 that was the road to go to expo 69 but before that my grandmother told me in the back the next road that we call dusty highway she Dusty said that was, that was the area a marked was to put the same airport where you're talking about in 1977. She said a plane landed there as a test run on that road. The airport was to be on that side and in the back on Dusty Highway there. And Gary also brought in a Canadian company to check to see if Grenada had oil. So all this thing about oil, all this research was already done. 
So the information on oil was already done back then, and they have that information. They know all the points which put the fine oil, and I think when the revolution come, they also brought the Russian to do it. Okay, so Gary, Gary started a lot of things what we inherit today. Even as you working in as you, what I learned as you workers finish work half past three, and the reason I raising this point to show you how Gary stand with his people and not the upper class because what is happening now is a Robin Hood system. They're taking from the poor and they're giving it to the rich. And for the past 40 or 30 years, they're only taking from the poor man. We're not getting anything. Independence today, and I, I know a lot of people can't even eat a proper oil oil. Because oil, oil is a very expensive thing right now. It's yeah. cheaper than like KFC. Grenadian National Dish right now is KFC. It moved. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> You're wrong, Nelson. Oh, you know, it's very fish about $15. No? Grenada's national dish is now KFC. My no. gosh. The, 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 at that time, the school came about in 78. No, 76, sorry, 76. And they, they had a bus system. And the, the workers must have finished work four o'clock. But you know, men working, cutting grass, they're sweaty, the hygiene not so nice. So it was talked about. And Gary said, okay, if your people have a problem with my people not smelling nice, okay, let them finish work half past three and build a bathroom and let a bed put on colon and they'll come around and let the white and black rub shoulders together. We don't want the separation in Grenada. And I only make that statement to show you that is leadership. You had people seeking our interest. If you listen to the news this week, Dennis, the poultry farmers is complaining that chicken is coming from Belize. You know? Yeah, 10 bucks, 10 and 12 bucks. I got that. I had 12. a talk. 12.50 you're paying for a whole chicken so mm -hmm. somebody bring down the chicken price so low to kill these fellas on their market yes i will do a show on that you understand and oh my god we put people in office to represent us how could you okay and approve document you supposed to stop that how you could encourage something like that last week i made the point with um with marketing board who could you, as somebody in charge of marketing, both telling farmers, careful how you're planting because we have a glut on the market and you have to give contracts or look for people to tell them who to plant or whatever. You should be happy to see you getting that Grenadian to plant. You should be happy. What is supposed to start talking about now? How we could get this, get people okay. If we could get a few persons, different parts in Grenada, look for the Elalini community and see Grenadian watch. We have a problem right now. The hotel industry clone, we have a lot of vegetables in the market. Let me concentrate on health. If you eat more local food, eat more vegetables and stuff, okay, it is much more healthier for you. Push it. Push it. Take some of them stuff, put it in a in, in, in bottle, can it. Package it. Talk this kind. This is the kind of conversation I want to hear coming out because you're talking about marketing, important board. So what you you understand? And you're going out there as a foreign affair. You're going in Dubai, big electronics and all kind of foolishness. That is not our thing. We think it our national and the flag. What you see there is a nutmeg. How we could take this nutmeg and turn it into products? The clove, the spice. Today, people hunting all over the place for a breakfast and a coconut. We used to put one coconut to a breakfast for oil long. No people gonna get him bringing in coconut in a pack from Trinidad or Jamaica. Okay, and say they're making oil long. So the cancer rate keep on climbing because we don't have people representing us. They're not seeking our interest. And that is my cry. In Ravasali, there's a, um, a pastor up here called Pastor King. And that pastor was by the road. I can't show because which part I'm the wife had a walk down there. But he paints up all the pole 
and decorate the place. And that is a man in the community. People have a lot of respect for him. And I would like to see more churches in Grenada and pastors in Grenada bring back that respect because people lost respect even for the church because the church are not bringing colors. Are they green or you're yellow? They bring colors into this thing also. When Gary went and fight again, the colors in the bank and the color who get job, these people bring back the color and it, it is it damaging us. So then it's tom up you and, and you, you're, you're strong in that area. I listened to you last year. I listen to this there last year that. But um Ingram, you need you need to continue doing shows like this so we could reach out to our people in the diaspora. The diaspora did more celebration for Grenada for my part, what I'm seeing online, than in Grenada. You're, Honestly. You're right. You're yeah, right. Montreal, yeah, yeah, the diaspora did more. I I I I watch a DJ, a Grenadian DJ in the States, and I I he plays some real back in time too. Real nice music. You understand? I saw that. I saw the yeah, everybody in the corner, and most of these people are now locked down in Canada and well going to lock down and they're doing something. Back home here, people shock. People shock on the server, people shock. Can you show us where you are at the moment? Can you flip your camera around to show us where you are? Yeah. Are they in River Sally, River Sally Junction? Oh. Can you bring the cam move the camera down, move the camera down. Let me see if I can get you. Let me see if I can get you big on the screen. Right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Woo! This, this area down there is bad way. Yes, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you turn around, you go to River Antoine, uh, La Poetry area. Right, River Antoine is River Antoine is this direction. That direction, yes. Yes, yes. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I love this area. I love this area. I often yeah, people really? used to get the bus and come down there all the time. I used to love looking at the houses. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah, you you go to Batwe and and Livera Beach. Yeah. yeah. Nice energy. The people up here. The people. Yeah, very, very cultural. Huh? Very cultural. Yeah, yeah. I saw a woman this morning, and she she tied her head in a Baptist wrap, mm -hmm. and she was on the Grenada colors her dress. The colors, she slippers in the Grenada colors, and her mask also the Grenada flag on it. Wow! So near you make a joke. I say that in general, Sally, she start to laugh. <laughs> 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 I sorry, I sorry, I didn't take a photo of her. No, but she really looked good. She really, really looked good. <laughs> All right, but that, that that was a very good one, uh, Ingram. You gotta continue this thing. Uh, my battery is about to go. Absolutely. So well, we we can cut. We've, we've done good. We, we've done really well today. So <laughs> excellent stuff. Yeah. Happy Independence, Grenada. Happy Independence. Yeah. Right, let's get one voice in that song and uh, make We're out. <laughs> It's always been in your brain. You have something there now, it's not bad. In the name of the land, we are ready for you. One of the times, Yes, Ingram, until next time. We we'll see you next week. All right. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or perhaps it's evening.
My name is Herica Willis. I'm an attorney at law practicing in Grenada for the past six years. As a slight background, I'm also an attorney at law in Jamaica and admitted as a solicitor of the Supreme Court of England and Wales in 2000. Well, I'm here today to inform you of wonderful news. I intend to advise and promote law in Grenada because Grenada 